Euroleague basketball is dynamic. Oh, we got ourselves a ball game here. It's also unpredictable. A big Basconia blow to the chin of the nine-time champions. And quite often, Euroleague goes right down to the wire. What a dramatic victory! Last month, the 60th edition of European Basketball's Premier Club competition concluded in the Turkish city of Istanbul. A new single league format was employed for the first time in the competition's history, meaning that all 16 teams played each other home and away in the regular season. The top eight sides then progressed to the playoffs before vying for a coveted place in the final four in Turkey. I think we were able to understand that, uh, that the new format it was going to be difficult from the first day. I remember one day when we played in Red Star, we looked at each other and we said how difficult this is going to be because matching the best teams in Europe means that no game is going to be easy. This is the first time actually you can, you can play against uh, all the teams in your league. I think where all players are excited for, it makes more competitive league. Until the last one, two games, nobody knows which position will finish. So I believe that was really good, really nice. Uh, everybody, they play against all the teams. So more logical and I like that. As a fan of basketball, which you know I am number one, to see the different results and to see the surprising results from the games and stuff has been exciting. Reigning champion Seska Mosko kicked off the 2016-17 campaign by routing Galatasaray 109-84 in their opening fixture. With nine titles, Real Madrid are the most successful team in the competition's history. 37-year-old Andres Nocioni inspired them to a season-opening win over Olympiacos, the first of four victories for the nine-time European champs in their first five games. By November, both Real and Seska occupied the top two spots in the table, and they met in Moscow. It was the Russian side that took the spoils with a single-point victory. We just need to stay focused on our job and keep working. Another of the early pace setters were Fenerbahce, who were all the more determined to gain a spot in the final four, given that it would be staged in their hometown of Istanbul. They went unbeaten in their first four games before coming unstuck against Unix Kazan. Langford inside the final minute. In Keith Langford, the Russian team Kazan boasted the eventual top point scorer in the league. A long time ago, I had a coach, and, and he told me that uh, anybody can learn to play basketball, but, but you're born a scorer. You know, I just always had a natural feel uh, to be able to do it um, from when I first started, so it's, and it's just kind of continued throughout my career. I know people that come and know that Keith Langford is playing. Man, this guy may have a good scoring out best. With a record 609 points this season, Keith Langford became one of just two players to win the Alfonso Ford Top Scorer Award for the second time in his career. The American hit double figures in every single game with his unusual left-handed style proving difficult for defenses to stop. I think a lot of people aren't used to it. You think, okay, don't let him go left. He's a left-handed guy. But it's one of those things where it's like, it's a split second, it's a hesitation, it's, it's all a timing issue, and it's something that you actually have to feel and be in front of me to understand, you know, how difficult it is to stop me from getting left. Despite Keith Langford's prowess in attack, Kazan ended up finishing the season second from bottom, highlighting just how competitive the Euro League was this campaign. But no team felt the fine margins of the league this season as much as Germany's Brosa Bamberg. They lost to the league's early pacemakers, Seska Moscow and Real Madrid, by just two points in their home fixtures against the sides. Away at Fenerbahce, the margin was just a single point. In fact, half of Bamberg's game this season were decided by six points or less, but they could only win two of those 15 games. Dramatic road victory, and once again, it is heartbreak for the Rosa Bamboo. 
team and the fans because for the fifth time in eight losses this season, it has been by a single shot. The worst thing to do is to go back on practice the day after. It was like with Ceska by 1.1 possession at the last second. And you still see the fire in the eyes of your players. Is that a great achievement? They've been in so many close games, Rose and Bamberg. So many of them, they seem to have come up on the wrong end of things as well. Sometimes you get frustrated when you lose by two against a top four team in Europe. But I think everybody can be motivated because we competed for so long, for 40 minutes, against one of the greatest teams in Europe. And Yui's doing everything he can. He's beaten this, 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 and he's dropped it in inside the final second. Sergio Yui, the heartbreaker in Nuremberg tonight. While Bamberg ended up finishing 13th, Seska Moscow extended their strong start across the season, finishing as the league's top scorers. However, 29-year-old Spaniard Sergio Yui helped propel Real Madrid to the top of the league. Los Blancos ended up champions of the regular season and subsequently made their way through the best of five series playoffs to take a place in the final four alongside Cesca Mosco, Olympiacos and Fenerbahce. Turkey's most populous and vibrant city, Istanbul, staged this year's final four where reigning champion Cesca Mosco faced Olympiacos in the first semi. Basketball is everything starts from from the mind. So we don't we don't care so much about who we face. We care more about ourselves. This is a new season. Everything is new, and of course, if somebody thinks uh, past memory can help them, they can use it for their advantage. We also can use it for our advantage to be more motivated. We're just moments away from tip-off at the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. The ball is up in the air and the game is underway. And Teodosic is going to take on another three. Despite a blistering start from Seska, Olympiakos hit back to record a famous four-point victory, which saw them through to the final. In the other semi-final, Fenerbahce took to the court at their old home arena against the league winners, Real Madrid. You know, I love going against Madrid, man. For some reason, it's always a special game when Fener and Madrid play. I hear bad it's going to be a really, really hard game because Fenerbahce has some great players, they have a great team, they have a great coach. And, but we are going to be there, so we are going to fight. This season's MVP, Sergio Yui, was impressive again for Madrid. But Fenerbahce's Ekpeudo put in a scintillating display, registering more points, rebounds and assists than any other player for the Turkish team, inspiring them to victory. The final saw Greece face Turkey, Olympiakos taking on Zelko Obradovic's Fenerbahce. They battled through as Olympiakos does. You know, that's, this is just the way they are. That's the way their history's been. It doesn't matter what players they sign. It doesn't matter what coaches they sign. They're just the warriors, and that's the way they play the game. I know Selko. Everybody knows Selko. Knows that these teams are prepared. But they have a lot to shake off. They play a brand of defense that's different, and Zelko can mix things up. Here we go, 40 minutes to a title. The tip-off is won by Venerbahce. The lob in time for the reverse to Jan Vesely. Fenerbahce's center, Ekpeudo, again shut down the opposition threat. Udo helped Fenerbahce become the first Turkish side to clinch the Euro League title. And in Istanbul, too. 